Hello everyone and welcome to another Pokemon video. Today we're going to be doing a tier list of all of the EX Pokemon in the game currently, where I think they stand and how good they are. So uh, yeah, let's go. We've got them broken up into their types. Uh, just so you know, we do have this uh, Lapras EX here, but I think that's a promo one. Uh, and I don't think that's available unless I'm missing something. Tell me in the comments if I'm being stupid. It's definitely possible. Uh, but the only Lapras I've seen is the standard one in the game, at least so far. So um, without further ado, uh, let's kick it off with the Grass uh, Pokemon. So first off, we do have Venusaur EX, a pretty powerful Pokemon overall. Uh, the only problem I think I have is it takes so long to get going that without exactly uh, Lilligant uh, to sort of ramp and you have to get that three stages through, I do think it suffers a little bit because the ramp just isn't as strong. Um, it is a powerful Pokemon though. Um, I'll be honest, I don't have two Venusaur G uh, EX, so I've not actually been able to play tons with them. But I think I'd put Venusaur at just like a, a, a complete steady sort of B tier, straight down the middle. It's decent, but I've never really gone up against a Venusaur deck and, and thought, oh no, I'm in trouble sort of thing, right? I'm never like really, truly worried. And next up, we have uh, Executor, uh, Executor, depending on how you want to say that. Uh, very unique EX Pokemon in that it's just a stage one evolution of Execute, of course. And it only requires one energy to be able to go. Yes, it only hits for 40 or 80 if you flip the coin. Um, but it's cheap nature, easy to sort of get, and it's high health can actually make it a really good tank for these grass decks that want to play a bit of a slower game, maybe try and use poison and heals to sort of out-sustain their opponents and anything else. So I, even though I, I think it's good and it's one you can also easily splash into any grass deck, you don't necessarily have to be playing a Venusaur deck, you can play some other stuff. So it's good to splash in as a big tank, but I think overall I would put him at C tier just because you can't build an Executor EX deck, right? I think it's just not consistent enough. This is more of like a side EX Pokemon, uh, at least in my experience. Uh, next up, we'll move on to Fire. And uh, this is where things get really, really spicy. Uh, Charizard, for me, uh, feels very, very strong indeed. Uh, he, he is weak to a few things, but I think <laughs> the problem is, does Charizard's power come from him being Charizard and his abilities, or does it, or, or uh, attacks, should I say, I shouldn't use abilities in this game, because that's actually a thing, or does Charizard's EX power come from Moltres EX, which we'll get to in a minute. So, I think, be okay, yeah, I think because of this, I think I would actually put Charizard into a, um, oof. I think I'll put him A tier because he does completely blitz uh, pr like any character in the game, basically, uh, it is how it works with his attack. It does discard two fire energy, but if you've been juicing him with Moltres all game, like I do in my deck, which I've, I've tweeted, by the way, I'll probably do a video on it soon. Um, you normally actually boost the Charizard to like six energy if you can get a couple of nice coin flips, which means you could just do that attack twice. Now the problem is, can you get the win with Charizard if you attack once and then get the attack back? Um, like, can you survive? Can you Charizard survive? Because normally you are kind of all in on one Charizard, unless you're playing really slow and you manage to like, sort of put a lot of energy onto two of them. It can be a little bit tricky, but I do think his attack is very powerful and he effectively deletes any Pokemon in the, in the game. So it's very, very strong indeed. Uh, Arcanine up next. I've not a chance to play tons of Arcanine, but the problem is Arcanine just feels like, yes, it's faster than Charizard, but it just feels like Charizard Light. It's only 120 damage. It does self damage. It's not got the same level of health, although it is of course easier to get through because it's just a Growlithe to Arcanine. I do feel it asks for a, a little bit too much. So I think I'd actually put um, Arcanine at D tier for me personally. I am sure there are like aggro decks that can get there, but I think if you're playing like a real fire aggro deck, you're probably running Blaine, which then doesn't do the Arcanine stuff. Maybe you run both, who knows? But yeah, I think Arcanine out of all the EX or out of a lot of the EX is just a bit, 
just not enough when you look at the other options of Charizard and uh, and the one we're going to get to now, which is Moltres. This just goes right here without any questions whatsoever. Moltres is absolutely incredible. Let me just extend this a little bit there so you can see. Um, Moltres is, I think, as a standalone, the single best EX in the game. Uh, it's basic, so you can draw it from Pokeball right now. It has a decent amount of health, but for one energy, you start ramping your fire Pokemon incredibly fast. And I do think the Charizard deck, uh, at least I've been playing, I'm not sure about anyone else, but I've, basically my Charizard deck is two Moltres and then two of the Charizard line with two EX Charizard at the end, of course. And basically you just land Moltres pretty quickly, ramp up a Charmander into so on, so on, so on, and burn. Sometimes you have to do, you know, the three energy on Moltres, but even if you end up with two Moltres, one on active, one in bench, you can just put that energy onto the second Moltres if you need to do the 70 damage for whatever reason. But I just think how strong this is, if you start with a Moltres turn one active, then your game's going to go well. I think it's as simple as that. I think it enables Charizard EX to be very strong and to be your game ender, whilst also being tanky enough to take at least a few rounds of hits, uh, even against uh, a lot of type disadvantage. So I think, yeah, I think Moltres for me right now, it uh, feels like the best EX in the game, uh, just because of its raw sort of standalone power. Um, next up, we move on to the electric types. Uh, Pikachu EX, very strong. Not, it, it, Pikachu EX doesn't feel broken in any way. It's not one of those they think, oh, how am I supposed to beat this? However, against some decks it kind of is because Pikachu EX generally goes fast, unlike the other decks or a lot of the other decks. You actually generally, at least so far, run a lot of Pokemon in this deck because you want to fill up your bench as consistently as possible. You want to get those Pikachu EX out and just blast. Um, this is weak to a deck or a card or cards we'll mention a little bit later on, but I think Pikachu EX existing to sort of be the aggro uh, EX choice a lot of the time is very, very powerful. And it can run down some of these slower strategies when you, we take a look at the likes of like, a, you know, like a Mewtwo decks, for example. And, and it sort of laughs at the this sort of Articuno, Zapdos only decks that are going around that are kind of bad, I think. So uh, yeah, I think Pikachu EX is pretty good. I would put it ahead of Venusaur. Um, I will do the left to right thing, by the way. So the left is the higher ranked than the right. So I do think it's better than Venusaur, um, but I don't think it's quite levels of Charizard. Uh, but of course they are very different decks. Um, Zapdos. I like Zapdos as a Pokemon, but this one, maybe this is personal preference. I, this one just doesn't do it for me, honestly. Like Zapdos in the Pikachu deck is fine, I guess. It's an okay basic to start with, but I just feel like, yes, you can high roll with it, but in every deck you run Zapdos, apart from the Zapdos only deck, obviously, I feel like you never want to put energy on it. Maybe you want to peck and that's it, but then it just feels like a bad Pokemon to have because it's EX as well. It can be knocked out for two. So for me, I think Zapdos actually goes down here. It's not as bad as, as, as Arcanine in, in my humble opinion, of course, but I, I think like out of these two i feel like executor always does more work i think zapdos is asking for a pretty big commitment uh, if you want it to actually do something and then you have to flip coins so yeah a little bit uh i think i think it's a little bit less powerful than the general population believe um okay i need a little uh, disclaimer here I've been trying to get starmy ex since like day two or three of the game being uh, available to play and I can't, I just, I just can't hit. I'm, I'm trying my best guys, I promise. <laughs> but um, I haven't been able to play this myself, but I've played against it a lot. A Starmie EX has really shot up in popularity. A zero cost retreat, stage one EX Pokemon that only needs two energy to deal 90 damage. And it's got like a decent amount of health. I feel is very, very, very powerful. I can't wait to get them. I think Starmie EX, I don't know, unless water gets something nutty in the near future, I think Starmie EX is going to be around for a while because that retreat cost, you can evolve it from Staryu, hit in, and then just retreat away if there's a problem, and then come back in, hit in again. 
Um, and then like with Giovanni, you can do 100 or type advantage, so on, so on. So I think Starmie for such a low investment, you can get a lot out of this uh, Pokemon. So yeah, very, very strong. Not quite the game when the Charizard is, but extremely flexible in water decks. Um, next up, we have uh, my joint top one Pokemon of all time, Blastoise, or this Blastoise EX. Um, I think this Pokemon's really uh, underplayed. Honestly, uh, maybe I like Blastoise and that's my own bias kicking in. Yes, you need to really juice him. Yes, a good Misty would help. But if this guy, if you can hold off and then boost a Squirtle through to, to get to Blastoise CX and start to get towards that five energy. I mean, even with three energy, he's dealing 100, which is really strong. He's got a ton of health. And if you get to five, you just one shot everything, right? Charizard is the only thing that can sort of jump onto the active slot and then take him out. The only thing to really be really be afraid of. But outside of that, like you just tank a Mewtwo shot, no problem, and then just kill it. Like it's, it's really, really powerful overall. Um, I think it's pretty underplayed, but I, I will say at least right at this second in time in terms of just how the metagame looks and feels, Go, I'm trying to pull in my own bias because I enjoy the deck as well. I think I'd probably put Blastoise here if I'm going to really, really rein it in. But I think Blastoise probably hit. No, no, you know what? No. Blastoise is going to have decided against it. <laughs> yeah, Blastoise A, I, I like a lot. I, he's so tanky and deals so much damage. And also because he doesn't lose energy... Yes, you need to get him to 5 energy for the big hit with the uh, 160 damage. But once he's there, if you bring him out, knock something out, what's what's an opponent supposed to do unless they have like exactly Charizard most of the time, right? Like, once he's out hitting, you need no... He's done. You don't need to then keep giving him energy or, you know, create these mechanics that keep feeding him somehow or overfeed him in the early game. Like, he just dominates. So, yeah, I like Blastoise. He's going in A tier. Um, next up to uh, finish off the EX for the water type uh, is Articuno EX. I'll be honest, very similar to Zapdos. Um, I think Articuno is better than Zapdos. However, I'm never that scared of it. Maybe, and I've been playing a lot of different decks as well. I think three energy is a lot to ask for, for a 140 health EX that does like 80. Yes, it does damage to the bench, but I think for me, prob Articuno probably goes in B, a little bit better than Executor, but I just think there's a lot to ask here, and I'm struggling to think of good decks that really play this. Of course, one of the decks is the Dragonite deck, for example, because you're running water energy anyway. It's a good card to sort of stall and, and deal some damage. And also it is a Misty target. So if you Misty this, because you can't Misty a Dragonite, of course, but if you Misty Articuno, if you want to run it, then Articuno can potentially do some work while you are still feeding energy to your Dragonair, Dragon, uh, Dratini, Dragonite, whatever. So it, it's a good option, but I don't think it's that strong. Next up, we move to Psychic and or Ghost, but Psychic in terms of the, the card game. Uh, Gengar. Gengar, very, very strong, but Gengar feels more like of a tech card than anything, and he takes a lot to get to. It's a three, uh, well, a stage two evolution, so three Pokemon, uh, to get to Gengar. I think Ghastly and Haunter are pretty good, but to get to that point, and then his ability is, of course, your opponent can't play supporters while he's in your active slot. He is good, but a lot of the time you're taking like two turns to, to knock out opponent's Pokemon at that stage of the game. So I, I think he's pretty good, but he's definitely more of a, a tech choice in other decks, I think. I don't think you're ever really playing a, a, a sort of double Gengar list. I think he's more of a one-off in there if you want to put him in to maybe close out some games. Especially if you play this and then like maybe red card and then they don't really have that many options left to do. Mewtwo, everyone will sort of see this and be like, oh, I've seen so many posts, so much complaining about Mewtwo is OP, um, it's too strong, or it's just a dumb deck, blah, 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 blah. For me, Mewtwo decks it aren't that scary at all. I, maybe because I've played against them 
the most. Like I, I, I played against so much like Mewtwo, so much Pikachu, and like the two, which you know is expected, and some Charizard, of course. Uh, the sort of three characters of the game so far. Mewtwo's fine. Yes, if we're saying when your opponent gets to play like Mewtwo, and then routes and you know up to Gardevoir, and then just shift ramp it, and then just keeps like 115 you a turn. That's fine, and yes, that's strong. But look at what they've had to do <laughs> to do that. What are you doing, right? If your opponent's played a Mewtwo out and l you've let it just chill, or there's no like Sabrina onto the routes or you know, whatever it's up to at that point, and you're not trying to like pile on pressure while they're just sat going, e evolve, 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 energy, energy, energy. You know, th that's a lot of time to set up an answer to this stuff. So although I think Mewtwo's good, honestly for me, because he requires a lot of setup, I'd probably put him here. Because look at the difference where Charizard hits for 200 and Charizard's setup is either you feeding it energy. It is three stage though, so you know, there is that. But you feed it energy or you just play Moltres, right? And, and like Moltres does it a lot easier. And because this setup engine is good for this, like Mewtwo feels a lot slower. Uh, for me, and also a lot of the time, yeah, you can play two Mewtwo's, right? But while Charizard is like charging up from Moltres in this example, because they're, they're similar ish decks, Moltres is the one tanking hits. Whereas in this deck, a lot of the time, yes, yeah, some play Jinx, and that's if you draw the Jinx, but then how many Jinx are you running, and so on, so on. But a lot of the time, Mewtwo's the one taking the hits whilst you're getting the routes, Carilla and so on out. So I think Charizard does this style the better way round with the bigger defense than Mewtwo does. But Mewtwo is still very good. Like I said, I, it, there's only three other EX at the moment above him. So he's still good. I'm not saying he's trash. I'm just saying I think people get too stuck in remembering the games where your opponent's gone exactly like Mewtwo, Mewtwo gone straight to Gardevoir, ev evolution every turn, and then drawn loads of cards or something, which yes, you will lose those games. Uh, next up is becoming a swift favorite of mine because of a deck list I built uh, today actually, um, which I'll probably do a video or at least post or something about. You can find all this on my stream, by the way, I stream all these lists. Um, Marowak. Marowak's becoming a favorite, as I said, very cheap. Cubone, uh, as the sort of pre-evolution of it, is uh, pretty easy to get out. Only costs one energy to, to sort of tank for a turn. You go Marowak, go up to two energy. Yes, you are at the, uh, you know, you put your, your fate in the, the hands of the gods with the coin flips. But Marowak, just being able to... Basically, 50% chance of one-shotting most basic and stage one. And then you've got the, the double heads, of course, which absolutely obliterate. Whilst having a pretty decent health total, you're probably going to, if you Marowak sort of on curve, you're probably going to have two sets of attacks to go, at least before he's knocked out. Put on top of that, he has a one cost retreat. Then that's super powerful. Because you took it out. If you're worried it's going to get killed, or knocked out, sorry. You can just retreat it or X-Speed, because in these decks I'd normally run X-Speed anyway. So, Marowak's are very, very similar to Starmie, where it's very flexible EX, very easy to get going. There's no real build-up you need to do. It's two energy and a Cubone and you're done. And you can start knocking Pokemon out early. And in this instance, look at the matchup, right? Where if they're you're against Mewtwo, it's sort of what I was talking about, or even at Moltres, and then... On turn one, they start, you know, building a Charmander, blah, blah, blah. You put down Cubone and then Marowak and then hit them for 80. Suddenly, they've got to start thinking about what, what, what they're going to do because they could just get knocked out and then you just win the game, right? Because these decks, a lot of the meta decks now are very slow. So yeah, I, I like Marowak a lot. I, I'd honestly put Marowak... Uh, I put Marowak here, actually. Yeah, I think this is right. I think Pikachu's more consistent. Pikachu's like the very close to being A. But I put Marowak up here because how easy he is to get going and how much damage potential is there. And it's just a huge threat and a very flexible threat as well. Uh, next up, we have Machamp. Um, the problem with Machamp is the build-up to him is horrible. You, There's no ramp, unless I'm forgetting something, because Brock... Uh, the, the ramp for like fighting or ground, rock, whatever. 
Brock puts one energy onto Onyx or uh, Golem, right? So you're getting no ramp at all to juice this. You match up as a starter is decent, but it's a two energy attack starter. Machoke's okay and hits for 50, which is fine. But again, you need this investment. And then if you don't, if you don't really, really hit something and, and really start to take control with Machamp, you're in trouble and it's so slow. There's chances that like your Machoke can actually just go down. And then this adds to a problem of in a vacuum, this is fine. But with the fighting type decks, apart from the one I'm running right now, which is Primeape Marowak, it feels very difficult to get to the Machamp and then have the confidence that Machamp is going to win. I think Machamp will knock out a Pokemon, but can you reliably get that second one if one's already an EX, of course. So Machamp's a little bit spicy. I think I'll probably put Machamp like here or here, maybe here. And finally, the normal type EX we have, which is a wiggly tough EX. I have two of these. Um, this has a very clear problem. Uh, I like the card. It's just, it's three energy. You have to, it's not base, so you have to evolve it. So you have to have the, you know, the Jigglypuff into Wigglytuff. Um, and also, yes, it puts them to sleep, which is decent, but it only does 80. So the second that sleep fails, you know, the second they just wake up on their turn, you've only dealt 80 as an EX, and there's only, what, 140 health? So it, it's, it's a little bit dangerous, and I think here, yes, it's a guaranteed 80, but I think here you see the difference between, like, Marowak, Potential, and Wigglytuff. Because Wigglytuff will have to hit something two, maybe three times. Marowak might miss them all, which is fine, but Marowak can also one-shot nearly anything in the game. So you have that up and down. Also, it's more expensive to retreat. Like I said, it's a whole extra energy. So sometimes you can't really attack with this too well. So I think Wigglytuff, honestly, for now, goes here. Uh, and yeah, just I, like I said, I'm not gonna do this Lapras because I'll be honest, I don't really know what it does. So we'll leave that over there. I don't think it's in the game right now. Uh, but yeah, that is my list. Um, I didn't really overly think about this list. I think the only thing I had locked in was that Moltres was gonna be S tier. And I do think Moltres is just a step above everything else because Moltres just like makes any fire deck feel good no matter what. And it's such a powerful opener. Uh, so yeah, Moltres is really, really good. Everything else below, you guys let me know what you think. So yeah, that's going to be it. There will be more deck videos and gameplay videos and so on coming up. So make sure to subscribe, uh, chuck a like. Let me know how you would do the tier list. I'm sure I've done them all wrong, of course, uh, if the comments are the, the usual things to go by. But yeah, thanks a lot for watching, everyone. I appreciate it. Have a great day.